Gaming is a company that goes into places like schools, libraries, prisons, human offender institutes, and we use games to teach, to educate, to socialise, and just get people having a good time. We work all over the UK, and we work pretty tirelessly. It's, it's hard work, but it's extremely enjoyable. And then we also do places like this, UK Games Expo, where we run the Family Zone, and we try and encourage parents, families, kids to get involved, try out gaming, hopefully they like it and hopefully it opens up a bit of a, a new world of, of opportunities and hobbies to them. But when we go into a school, the aim of what we do there really is about education. It's about how can I get all these kids to spend several hours doing maths, and whereas in a lesson, within 10 minutes they're going, I don't want to do this. Well, they sit with us for, you know, several hours just doing games which in essence are maths or maybe just literacy based games and that is about education, it's about raising their standards, it's about getting them to use and want to use the grey matter and you know push themselves and challenge themselves so in that situation yeah it is entirely about education. Again it depends what that prison, what the sort of issues they're facing, what they're wanting from their, their sort of inmates and people there Generally, it's often uh, socialisation, just get them to chill out sometimes, relax, or just, I guess, just enjoy each other's company in a non-aggressive, thoughtful way. So the games we would use in, say, a young offender institute or a prison will be very different to some of the games we might use in a school, but nevertheless, they do kind of the same job. So same as, same as the families, you would... You wouldn't start with certain games. There are certain games we probably use as a bit of an icebreaker in those situations. The aim is still to take them on a bit of a journey and a bit of a path through games. Maybe further down the lines, using some of the cooperative games like Forbidden Island and Forbidden Desert, and get them to enjoy putting the brain in gear with a big smile on the face. And they're not used to doing that in those situations often, I don't think. This place is to really is to get people into gaming. Uh, is to show families, you know what? As a as a family unit, you can have a fantastic time doing these things together. It's playing it. So certain families will like something quite studious, quite uh, tactical or strategic. Other ones like something that's a little bit raucous, a bit fast, a bit furious, a bit loud. So it's horses for courses, really. I think what we're very very good at is is quickly looking and working with a family and understanding what works best for that family. We have a huge range of games here this weekend. We've got over 170 games uh, for people to play, so it's not like we won't have something for everyone. Well, obviously we've got a bit of a we've got a giant pandemic and a ticket to ride going off. We've got this giant castle panic we stood on. We've got the giant games from France, the Gigamic range, and then we have the whole range of games that we take into schools on a regular basis. So that will include things like Double that people might know. Hey, that's my fish. Some new ones like Looney Quest. Some sort of ones that slip under the radar, like a game called Dodeca and Anomia. There are just so, so many games. Um, yeah, everything has been popular. I don't think there are many games at all that haven't been touched. It's certainly been our, our most exciting, our busiest, our most frenetic uh, Expo so far, uh, yesterday, the Saturday was, was crazy, crazy busy in here, um, but really, really positive. Again, it's been a, another really good three days. I think the Friday was an interesting experience, the first Friday we've opened. We had nice, steady crowd in there, and it allowed us to get some of our new volunteers on board, getting to play plenty of games, understanding them, getting to understand the sort of environment that we're in. It's, it's a very different sort of environment in this place to us we, as we would work in schools. Um, and it was great for them just to have the experience of working with those parents and understanding what they need to say, how they need to say it, which games to pitch to them and so on. So we do quite a few bits of charity work, we do an awful lot of volunteering. All this we do here, this is all volunteered. We're not paid in any way for this, this is just us volunteering time because we want to make a difference. And I think what's been evident at Expo is we have made an enormous difference. When we took this over, the running of this zone over, uh, this was a, a tiny room upstairs with you know a dozen kids or so, and we've we've turned this into this this huge exciting place that families come year after year, want to return to, want to talk to the friends about, 
and it's it's such a fantastic area and there are people coming here now that I, I believe would not normally come to somewhere like Games Expo without there being a family zone there so I think it makes a huge difference so, so I think as an expo for us it's been really good again it's been really really successful People that have come to the Expo over the weekend can actually vote for the Expo Players' Choice Awards, so we've had lots of slips back to that. Um, but the actual awards themselves, we've had teachers and parents uh, come and spend some time with us as they do all the judging. We don't have any influence over the awards. It's put down to the end users, they're the ones that make the decision. Exciting the fact that it's growing yet again. Obviously, we've had done this place pretty quickly. I think, I guess there's a certain amount of trepidation because the room that we get at the moment is so, it works so well for us. This We have this little enclosed environment. There's a great atmosphere in here. It's a little bit enclosed. It's, it's relatively quiet. It's almost like a haven for families away from the sort of hustle bustle of the rest of the convention. And again, if we can maybe replicate that over here, uh, sorry, over at the NEC, that would be great, but I guess we need to see and understand what's the room, what's the space, how are we going to be able to recreate this sort of atmosphere? Because it's certainly one of the, the big points of the room that we're in now. The families just love this calmer, relaxed, professional little atmosphere that we've made. So, yeah, I'm excited, uh, but let's, let's, see what, let's see what is uh, thrown at us first. still on a bit of a high. I think it's it's a bit of a golden time for gaming. There's never been a, a better a better time to get into games. Um, I think there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, it's still a niche hobby. It's crossing over to mainstream, but it's it's a long way to go before it, it gets to where I feel it should be. But I think with events such as this, with what we're doing with the schools, yeah, I think it's it is a bit of a golden time, and it's just. I think you just have to keep going and keep going. More events like this I think would, would be really useful and I think the space on the calendar, um, certainly the companies out there, there are so many great licenses about the moment. It's no matter what your your style or theme of game is, there is something out there for you at the moment that will just blow you away. And we'd always just say just keep trying new games, keep playing games. And our mission is we want to change the very nature of gaming and make it become a a very much a family thing that everyone does, just as it is in over in Europe, where it's a very different atmosphere. We want to change the UK to that sort of environment and get more and more people doing it, families playing it. So it's a great time for gaming, but there's still a lot of work to be done, is what we would say.